weird from here, but it works, right? History. It does work. God is good. You know, it's funny that, you know, you see all these things on, on online about the coronavirus and all this stuff, but yet some people, they don't shake when, when they don't know the Lord. You know, there's people there that doesn't know Christ, but it doesn't matter to them. But I think, I think we should be more scared not knowing Him. Amen? Amen. Um, this, I had a little uh, scare with my wife that, that last week where she was, she's a nurse and uh, she, she deals with a lot of this stuff, but um, I got to take her to the ER, you know, and uh, you know, just there's some peace in, you know, it was, I, I wasn't even scared, I was just, I had this peace in me about, you know, who God is in my life, amen? And who, uh, doesn't matter what happened, but if, if, if I know that I'm with him, then I know that he could heal me. It's by faith, amen? amen? So we're just gonna worship him, and I felt like, you know, we might not all be here, but I know we have people that are online and watching and everything, but I know that wherever you guys are, His presence is there. Yes. And we just want to invite the Holy Spirit in His presence. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise today. Lord, with all this chaos in the world, Father, you still, a, you still prepare a table for us in front of our enemies, Father God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your truth. And we know, Father God, with all this that's happening, we believe in you. We have faith in you, Lord. So we just stand with you in your presence, Father God, and just, we come and praise you. Even when the breakthrough doesn't come, Father God, we're gonna come and praise you this morning.
us, Lord. Your loving arms around us. Your wings protecting us, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are in this house and all the homes, Lord, that are connected to us, Lord. Through all the churches, Lord, all the congregations, the body of Christ this day who have reached out through the internet and through live streaming, Lord, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord, that, you know, the world's out there in some chaos right now, and, you know, the fear is a liar. The devil wants to take something really small. And I know the, the virus is a huge thing, but he wants to take even the smallest of details like toilet paper and just put us into panic. But your word and your presence, Lord, it, it, it's, the, it's the peace in the, in the middle of the storm. It's the calm. And that's why we're gathered. That's why we're connected. That's why we plugged in today. We're here under this promise of yours from Psalm 91. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge and my place of safety. He is my God and I trust Him. For He will receive you from every trap and protect you, for check this out, protect you from every disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Lord, we turn to you and, and we turn to you for this time to worship you and, and to know that we're in this presence of yours. For, for all of you who are at home connected to us through Facebook Live, there, there's a comment section below your screen. We don't want you to sit at home and watch TV today. We want you to interact with us. We want you to type in your prayer requests. Type in your praises as we're worshiping. We have, we have some leaders of the church who are, are going to monitor that. We're going to engage with you. What is God doing in your living room right now? Or wherever you're watching, even on your phone in the car. Or what, what is God sharing with you? How can we pray for you? How can we... You know, just call out this awesome, supernatural God that's above what's going on in the natural right now. And, and, and to engage with Him and connect. And so that, that's going to be our worship time here. If you're new with Hope and connecting to us in the live stream, we, we're going to have a time of communion together as families. We ask maybe you want to go and, go and get some bread and, and some juice perhaps, or just some bread and some water to take communion with us uh, in a few moments and um, and then we're going to hear hopefully we're going to hear from God and we'll be able to engage with that that we won't just hear a message and turn off the TV and, and turn off the, the video and then go about our day that you know that would be like taking a vitamin without eating anything you're not going to get it all so after our, our time of worship together, we're going to spend 10, 15 minutes with you online, praying with you, sharing what is God telling you, being the body. That's something that Hope's really good at is being the body, being a family. We're going to do that today. So thanks to everyone for bringing in God's presence. Thank you for the, the 40-some people that are here with us right now, just worshiping God. And, and, and let's continue just to pour into Him and, and know that His strong arms are protecting us, keeping us safe, and, and, and His wings are surrounding us. Let us continue to lead in, in following Him. Brother Harold, please, please lead us on in worship. You are worthy, Lord. How worthy you are. Yeah, we're 
Wow, you shouldn't even come have, have this service. And I mock small beginnings, which you tell us not to do. And yet today, thanks for showing me just this promise that you have for us, that it doesn't matter how many people are gathered, your, your love is immense. And, and today already, just with the families that we've got connected through the internet, Lord, we're, we're reaching places we never have before. And it's all about you. It's not about what we think. And so I just thank you, Lord, for this presence that we have. And just to soak in you is enough. It just melts away the what's out there in, the, in our hearts and the world. And so, Lord, my prayer is for the living rooms as well as where people are right now, that your presence would just be strong with them as they gather, Lord, that people would feel and experience you in a, in a meaningful way right now. You're the God that created everything. Even this virus doesn't go without your notice. And you're above it. You're sovereign over it all. And, and, and you use everything for your good somehow. And there's a reason for everything. And, and you know, <laughs> you conquered death. That it, because of our love for you and your love for us and our belief in you, it, it's honestly just a virus. It's not eternal death. <laughs> How uncanny. <laughs> the word corona means crown. And you overcame death with a crown of thorns. That's a corona you can sign me up for. Thank you, Lord, for your corona. For your corona. For your corona, Lord. Your corona. Over all things. The fact that you're with people we love and care for right now, God. It, it, at least in our community, as this congregation, no one that we know of has been uh, personally affected, Lord. We give you thanks for that protection. But we lift up those, Lord, that are at risk, that we love that aren't meeting with us today because of just needing to be cautious and needing to be wise. Lord, we lift up those who are in, in hospitals right now and respirators. Lord, just we pray there that your presence is just so strong with them right now, Lord, that it's just going to overwhelm them. And Lord, we pray with the nation right now. There, there was a national call by our, our government leader, our president, and be a people of prayer today, Lord. We pray for your mercy, Lord. Your mercy over the world, Lord God. You are our God that hears prayers. You're a God who hears cries, Lord God. And, and if we didn't if we didn't turn to you because two tall buildings that held money in New York City fell down and hold with it, Lord, maybe we'll wake up here. I don't know. But Lord, we just cry out to you now, Lord, knowing that you're God. You're Almighty God. And, and you're sovereign over this. And you love us. And you care for us. And we live forever. And death doesn't have any victory over us. And so, you know, we're, we're going to go to communion right now. Because of your crown. Because of your crown, Lord. It was the blood that you spilt. Your, your word says in Isaiah 52, it says that by your, your stripes in your body were healed. That's, that's the flesh blood. That's not the cross blood. That was the flesh blood that healed us. It, it, it's that body, flesh, blood that we call upon the name of Jesus to heal us or infirm and to keep us protected and safe, Lord God. In, in the spiritual realm, Lord, we just throw that out there as a blanket of protection, Lord God. We praise you that your name and your blood are powerful over all over all curses, Lord God. And so we break this curse of this infirmity over this land. And Lord, we thank you, God, for um, the blood that you did spill on the cross. All of your blood. That gives us a new covenant, everlasting life, a new connection with you. 
And so we, we take this time now to remember what you shared with your followers in that last meal that you had, that Passover meal, where, they ate, where it was remembered that in Egypt, when your people left and were freed from bondage and slavery, the angel of death passed over those who put blood on the doorpost that marked them as saying, we belong to you. And there was a lamb that they sacrificed for that blood. And you're that lamb for us now. And so we take in this cup that you told us represents your blood on the cross, knowing that we are in that covenant. There's, there's blood on our hearts and our doorpost. And, and the angel of death passes over us. And we take in your, your body, Lord, that you shared with us. You said this bread represents your body. It is broken, and it is broken for us. And so, Lord, we thank you that you, you broke your body for our sins so we wouldn't have to die. For the things that we do that disconnect us from you, the fear that we have, the anger that we have, the, the, the selfishness that we have, the, the lust, the addictions that we have, Lord, all those places where we don't let you rule in our hearts, where we push you out, or that we've been broken and just don't know how to get out, Lord, you covered that. You broke that curse. And so, Lord, we take this communion, Lord, with you. And if here in this house, the ushers will pass by the communion cups uh, we're using again house church family we're, we're going to use those prepackaged uh, communion things again um, enjoy the wafer and enjoy enjoy the juice it's a bit different let me give you a quick instruction on how to open it you, you, you want to peel that top layer off over the bread first not that little corner tab, but the, you want to peel that top layer off first to get to the bread. And then after you do that, you can go ahead and peel off the, the corner tab, and you'll get to the juice. Lord, we thank you for your communion. We pray, Lord, that all those who believe in your Son are communing with you today. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's children said, Amen.
Fields to you, Lord. These are precious people to this family. Your word makes it clear that we're to care for them, and we want to care for them. We want to care for anybody you put in contact with this Lord. Let us know, God, who it is that we need to lift up in prayer. Lord, and I thank you for the word that you just poured out to us through our dear sister Kate. Isaiah 28, verse 16. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm placing a foundation stone in Jerusalem, a firm and tested stone. It is a precious cornerstone that is safe to build on. Whoever believes need never be shaken or afraid. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are here. We are yours. You are our cornerstone. Lord, you are what we're building our lives on, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, that that perfectly square rock that we're building upon is not shaken, is not moved, can withstand wind and rain and torment Amen. and disease, Amen. and still we will build upon you. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Add your amen out there. I see you. Add your amen. Praise God. Praise God. And Thank you, Brother Harold, Crystal, Gerald, Jean. Give them praise. Everybody. Give them praise. Give them praise. Hey, it is, um, it's awesome to be here today. Thanks for connecting up with us. Thanks for being here, folks. Um, thanks for, you know, today's a big day to come. Besides the fact that it was miserable rain out here, and we had to endure that, we know that uh, today was a day of faith. Today was a day of faith, so thanks for being with us. Um, a couple things I want to remind everybody about. Uh, again, we are live stream, and if you're watching us on Facebook, we ask that you would like our Facebook page so you can get an automatic notification of next week when we go live stream. And also, you'll see in probably your lower or your upper left corner is the address to our Instagram. And uh, you can connect to us right now as well if you wanted to and chatting with us on Instagram. And that's going to be a way for us to, uh, to connect up. And uh, that address, I mean, I don't know my memory, is um, uh, at Fairfield CCCA. Did I get that right? I blew it? Oh, uh, at Hope 
Thank you. At Hope CC Fairfield CA. It, it, it's right there on your screen, so forgive me for messing that bit up. Um, hey, there's a couple of great phrases that, uh, um, you know, in spite of everything that's been going on uh, with, uh, with this past week, uh, there's a lot of great things and joys that have been going on. Uh, one of them I got a picture here for you. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's something that I encountered this week uh, when I was at Walmart. Um, I don't know if you can see it so well uh, here because we had a little uh, technical glitch with our screen, but can you see the picture of the gentleman right to the left there? You see the smile on his face? He's at Walmart. They just brought out a box of toilet paper. <laughs> and, and he was... <laughs> I was second, I got the second package, but he was, he, was, he was so happy he got his toilet paper. So, you know, praise God for the little things, you know, praise God for the little things. But there's been some big things too. There's been some big things too for us. Uh, one is that uh, we as a family, as you know, we, our rent was raised and we're moving out. God said to move, we didn't know where. And so we found a spot that we were praying over and thought God wants us to go to this spot here in our community, 320 Campus Lane. And when we started to talk to the landlord there, we discovered that the city has a, a zoning ordinance that doesn't allow churches to be there at all. Uh, or excuse me, let me make a phrase, churches, churches to worship there at all. They can do all the other ministry. They can have a, they can have a school, they can feed homeless, uh, as we do every week. Um, they can do all those things, but they couldn't gather for worship. And we thought that that was wrong. We checked with the Pacific Justice Institute. They told us that is wrong. And uh, honestly, it didn't come as a surprise to us because for 20 years, we've encountered that with our city. In, in different spots, there's different zonings. They simply would say to churches, no, you cannot go there, pick somewhere else. And it, it, it was, isn't right. Here's the praise. We heard God say to us, ask for 320. Unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. Right. <laughs> through him be the glory. Amen. And throughout all generations. Through the church and Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And so he told us to ask for that place. We did. We met with the city mayor. We called him. He's an advocate and a friend of ours, Mayor Harry Price. And we met with Stefan Chatwin, the new city manager. And we prayed together in that meeting as we told him, this isn't right, this needs to be changed. It's simply an administration thing. It's an operations thing. Let's not make a lawsuit out of this. Let's just do what's right. I got the phone call this Thursday. They're making the change. I give, you know what, I really give praise. Here, now here's the thing. I really don't know if we're going to meet there or not. It's all good. I, that was from, you know, God is a light into your path, a, a guide to your steps. The only step he said was to ask for that place. Yeah. And what took place was now this zone and several other zones through the city of Fairfield are going to open up for churches. The first time I've ever seen that in 20 years since I've been here. So if there's been no other victory, thank God for that. Yes, for him, we're just going to keep following him. To our knowledge, we're going to be in Rodriguez High School April 5th, yes. unless they shut down the schools right. totally in April. That's up in the air. We don't know. After that, we'll find some place to film. I've got a living room. <laughs> There's other living rooms. We'll, right. we'll be live. And, and here's the thing again. This is where I really want to emphasize this. This is not to be a TV experience for those of you at home and for us to share with your friends later on. When we're live, engage with us. Use Facebook comments, use Instagram. We have people who are reading it, looking what the prayers are, and we're gonna follow up here today in a moment as I give a message, um, and, and we're gonna follow up with that together as to how to be the body and how to continue to be connected. That's the challenge, and that's what the devil would love to do is just have everybody just, okay, let's just do church, TV church, and then we don't become the body. Even though there's a lot of restrictions that we need to follow to be safe, we can still connect. That's right. We can still connect. God wants us connected. He wants us connected to him and to each other. Amen? Amen. 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 So we're going to keep doing that. 
And it looks like as a result of today, we're going to be doing that in a few other states that haven't been doing that before. So give praise for that. Here's another phrase. Here's another good thing that took place this week. Uh, not, this, not just this week, but Doug Knifton came back from India and from his missions trip. And it's a great praise of what God did. And so, you know, we're going to keep our hearts connected to him, moving with him, no matter what the virus is doing. He is still moving the church. He's still moving with us. So give God some praise, and let's have Doug come up and share with us what this place right here is doing. Thank you. So I'm going to just kind of ask you a few questions. I think it's probably our best approach today. He's got the microphone, and now make sure you wash your hands. Ah, look at that. <laughs> That'll work. I don't know. Is it on? You got it working? No idea. We can hear it. And his lovely wife, Connie, give her a round of applause. Who's safely wearing the mask. She's not sick. She's wearing it just because, you know what? The virus is around, and you never know if we have it or not. And so she's wearing the mask to be safe to make sure that it doesn't spread. So that's why we have the chairs six feet apart and all that other good stuff. Go ahead, Doug. I, I digress. So it doesn't sound like it's on. Yeah. We got no battery. We got nothing. Okay, grab another one. Wow. 
25,000 our house so juice is yeah. five, six people times 25,000. Yes. And I, I, at, at least I choose to figure yes. that out. I can't count that. Yes, yes. It's, it's hundreds of wow. thousands of people. 10 years. Incredible. Yes. That's incredible. So that had to be, spiritually, what was that like for you? I mean, for you personally? Do you know, it was, it was just amazing to see um, to see how they, are, how disciplined they are, how focused they are on their goals, and how, and just to keep seeing people who are who are, are multiplying in the faith. Gotcha. So the, the, their goals are to, to actually talk with people and to engage with them. They have a they have a, a ministry model, an outreach model, and they have a discipleship model with seven steps. And they they are very structured in the way that they disciple the believers. It's obviously um, working. Yeah, eight. Um, they're, 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 they have a vision to plant throughout northern India churches and villages, and and they um, uh, they're these are among the, it's a very poor area in northern India. Uh, the, the most of the manufacturing and technologies in the south. And um, eight out of ten people are oral learners, oh, wow. and they learn through stories. Got it, got it. So, what would you say would be like, just to make it simple for us, maybe grasp? What would be like the top three needs that they were addressing through faith? Do you know they on faith they opened a school and they, they built and opened a new school, and they're they're working towards. Uh, filling it, their vision is to initially have a thousand students, and 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 the tuition they collect will pay for two hundred of those untouchable kids to be educated for free. Wow. And they, um, you know, education is valued, and poor families will sacrifice to send their children to a good school. So they are those capital needs for vans, buses, smart boards, and things like that, mm -hmm. and. Our group represented several churches and a foundation who were actually raising capital to to finish launching that school. To equip them and to yes. raise them up. Got the heart of their ministry is church planting and multiplication, and they're raising support for 200 workers and and 500 church planters to go to unreached villages. And so they do that. Um, they 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 are raising support at 60 to 120 dollars a month per person, depending on where they're going. And um, those are some of the some of the, their, their needs. Their God, their needs. God, awesome. Did do um, so. This, the school does it. I guess what's the process a little bit? Do they go to a village? Uh, all of a sudden, a house church rises up. They start educating in the home. Before you know it, there's more homes, more kids, and now we need to establish a school. Is that the how school it was? The school was built in the area where their orphanage is is located and uh, they just are recruiting out into the villages and um, families will um, Hindu families will be are happy to send their children to a Christian school if it's a good education so they are just reaching out to everyone and, and schools are a good business in India they actually can make money and once they once they reach the break even their plans are to double in size and to use that Revenue to support their ministry. Gosh, it's, it's a, a good business. That's model. their tent making. If you yes, know, right. Yes, awesome. it, it does a number of things, and they recruit their teachers from all over India. Okay, to find wow. you know, to find believers. To wow. Teachers. Wow. All right. So you know, you guys have been involved in this for a long time before you, you know, started uh, coming to be with us for the last couple of years. What's your prayer for us to be involved? What, what does that look like? I know it's not on the paper. I didn't ask. I just also I realized we we need to ask you how how can how how should we be involved? You know, I would say that um, prayer is what they need. Mostly, their need is is for um, for encouragement. And and um, when we travel, that we really have an opportunity. They, they, I've heard them say this that they need our prayers and our encouragement. And um, you know, we we uh, by the way, this church raised some money, which um, before we left, which which one of the, the church the house church we went to, it's helping his children with uniforms and tuition in the oh, school. Cool. Very cool. So that, that, that's a blessing. All right, thank you. Praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If, if, if they get an extra hundred dollars, they will put it, they will send it, they will put it with those they're sending out okay. to plant churches. Awesome. So we can help in the in finances and the church yeah. movement, but obviously right. the biggest thing is prayer. 
Right. Um, we, we went into location after location with, where church planters were, meet, were gathering and meeting, and they would stand up and share how many churches they planted, which ranged from five to 250. Wow. And there are just, they, that they, are, they oversee areas. And you think, how can you encourage them? We, we went, I was going to say, I mean, uh, that's encouraging to me. I mean, we're supposed to go there and encourage right. them. We, we can learn from them and, yeah. how, and how they plant churches. And we were, and, and also some of the places of stronghold, like there's a city in Bugai where Buddha, they said Buddha received his enlightenment. It's a, it's a holy site for, him, for, um, for, for Buddhists to come to. And we were in a basement in a building with church planters near that town. We went to Varanasi, which is on the Ganges River, and people come and bathe and drink the water because they believe it will redeem them. And there's constant smoke from funeral pyres. They believe that if their ashes are scattered in the, in the Ganges, they'll go to heaven. And there were, we met with church planters in that location. So um, I, I would say, you know, I, I stood in front of a group of, of church planters and they each shared their churches and they had recently, some of them had recently been arrested and jailed. And they asked us, we came up in the front of the room in every, in every meeting and they asked us to speak words of encouragement to them. And I got up there and said, what am I gonna say to these guys? And I shared Romans 8, 38, how nothing can separate us from the love of God. And I looked around the room and I saw focus and seriousness and that they, they really were down to business. And I said to them, I said, I don't see fear on your faces. You know, I see brave warriors who are standing up and, and sharing the gospel. And I got to see that room light up with, with, with smiles. I think that was a, a special moment. Awesome. So they, they really, you know, I think that's what we can share and encourage them with. Awesome. Great. Well, then let's, you know what, house church and people at home, let, let's pray for them. Let's, let's pray for this ministry in, in India. And, and so you know, we're, uh, we are purposefully not disclosing the name uh, because this is out on the internet. So, yes, Kevin. I have a specific need. I was planning to do some fundraising for India yeah. with jewelry making, um, selling scarves, and um, artwork. And looking for anybody that might be interested in doing that, so pray about it. Um, let me know, got the supplies, and just need someone to take off with that. Okay. It's been a three years in the making, and I haven't, I don't have the time, but I, I know somebody does. Okay, awesome. Lord, when we ask your blessing, Lord, thank you for giving us uh, some, uh, you know, some, some wisdom and inspiration on how to be involved with your movement in India. Lord, thank you for this family of hope, uh, you're bringing Doug and Connie to us and their involvement and how they got uh, connected to what you're doing there. Thank you for your movement, Lord, of, of you know, saving people to um, understand the power of grace, understand the, the, the love that you give to us through Jesus Christ is one of grace and not one of having to earn things or, or to uh, go through um, rituals for redemption. Lord, we're redeemed because of you. And so we give you thanks, Jesus. Use us in a mighty way to support these people. We pray encouragement over them right now. Lord, that's a, that's a, a prayer you always answer. You always love to pour out your courage, to end courage to people. So give them your courage, Lord, and your faith today, Lord. As they arise here soon, this, this day, Lord, they may know that you are with them carrying them, protecting them, and moving them. And move us, Lord. Move us to be moving with you through all the peoples of all the earth because you're with us all the time. In Jesus' precious name we pray and all God's children said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Yeah, Thank you just one more thought. We're, yeah. we're very happy to host an India dinner and share in much more detail with the body. All right, uh, cool. we, have, we have a great slideshow and things like that. This isn't the right time for that. But we'll, we'll do that soon. That. We'll do that Thank soon. You. Cool. You have Indian food, sir? Yes. Awesome. All right. Awesome. I'm there. I'm there on Indian food. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Give give God a round of applause again for what we've got going on in front of us. It's important for us to have this large perspective.
largely the fact that the God is in fact in control, he's in charge, and he is moving. So, amen, church? Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Hey, let's, let's take that particular theme and let, let's, let's put that to our hearts now and, and looking at a word of encouragement that God showed me, uh, give us some perspective as a congregation, as, as a body of people, as to what he has in mind for us as he's moving in every situation. He's moving in this, in this particular time of crisis with this health thing right now with coronavirus as well. So well, let's, let's stop right now and take a pause. And, and I just want to pray and join with me and get my heart right and get our, all of our hearts right to listen to what you have to say. Lord, we give you thanks and, and, and just adoration for your sovereignty and your strength over this situation. Lord, we thank you, God, that you have promises for us and you have shown us your love. You have shown us how great it is even in spite of these circumstances. Lord, you, you have shown us that not only have you protected us, but your love is powerful and it moves us. So Lord, I ask that you would be heard right now. We can go into your scripture, your word. This is your truth. We're not perfect at living it out, but we are certainly knowing that it is your guidance to our lives and it's alive. Help it to be more alive in our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's children said, Amen. 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 Well, in fact, um, you know, one of the one of the blessings that we are having today is that we are scattered amongst the town. We're scattered amongst the country, connected to one another through the internet, connected through God's Spirit and His love. We're, I'm saying that when I say we, I'm not talking about this congregation. I'm talking about the church, the body of Christ. It, it, it's, there's a bigger connection today. Truly, there's a bigger connection today. We, um, just with the number of people that are connecting to us on the live stream, uh, we have more people attending with us today than, uh, than we would have probably otherwise. It's a, it's a huge day for us. So we're thankful for that. And... Uh, you know, in, in that particular connection that we have with each other, it, it, it reminds us of the fact that, you know, God has been moving us to leave this building. Uh, the, the fact that where we are right now in different homes, it's a truth right now that honestly, God has left the building. His presence is here. Don't get, my, don't get me all tripped up on the theology here, but His presence is here. But the church has left the building. We are now out with where God wants us to be. So I want to look at a scripture that's going to go in a little deeper about why that, why that's occurring, why God wants that, and as well as what role we play in our relationship to, with God to be in a church that has left the building. So go ahead and turn with me to in your Bibles, look to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. Uh, the Gospel of Matthew is called the Gospel or the Good News, given to us by the, by the Apostle Matthew. In chapter 14, and, and the Bible's here on our in our uh, chairs. It's on page 587. Um, but it, I want you to at home. Hopefully, you can get a Bible. If you don't have one, if you need a Bible out there, uh, write in the comments section. I need a Bible, and we'll mail you one. Uh, we want to make sure you got one. So uh, let us know how we can connect with you and, and getting the getting the God's Word. So in, in chapter 14, just a Kind of a quick overview here. Jesus has been doing his ministry, sort of the early stages of it, and he has just discovered that his cousin, John the Baptist, has been killed. And now that relationship has got to be very, very much a tight one. We see how Mary, uh, as the mother of Jesus, was very connected to, um, to in, in raising and having the pregnancy together with John the Baptist. So this is a family loss. This is a deep family loss. And we see Jesus' reaction. And in this reaction, how he responds to the disciples, it shows us this part of God's love that is beyond just being together. And so let's look at this together here in verse 13. It says, reading along, as soon as Jesus heard the news, and this is the news about John the Baptist, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. 
But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now I'm going to pause. I'm going to just break this down here a little bit, a step at a time. The first thing we see here is, you know, Jesus is 100% God and he's 100% human. Amen? Amen? So in this humanness, he's just lost his cousin. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm close with my cousins and I've cried at some of their passings. So I have only, a, if you will, maybe just a touch of understanding of what he went through in, in, in the loss of, of his cousin. But in the middle of this human grief that he has, in the middle of, of the... Of, of this loss that he's perhaps devastated by. He's trying to get away just to cry, to weep, to be alone with God. But something moves him away from the grief. What moves him away is the compassion that he has watching the disciples out there, watching the followers, watching the people have a need. And, and this is a powerful truth that we got to keep in mind for us. And that the power of our Father's love can move us to places of His outpouring and places of His desire beyond ourselves that actually help us in our own grief. So, I mean, obviously this is a, maybe a, a small little lesson for anyone out there going through grief to know that, you know, when we care for someone else, we're moved and we get closer to God. And as we're closer to God, our own grief just dissipates a bit. Amen? Uh, how many of you ever felt that before? Felt that experience? I know I have. I know I have. I, when my mother passed away, completely devastated. But as people loved on me and gave me time to just to kind of come back, to come back to minister to other people, what was uncanny to me was after my mother had passed away, like three weeks went by, and then a very dear friend of mine by the name of Mouse McNary found out that he was terminal with his cancer and was going to be passing away that following Thanksgiving. So I had, from a human standpoint, I had from mid-September to Thanksgiving, but it was the Father's love of caring for others that helped me through my own grief because I was able to share, this is what I'm going through, knowing what the family that I was talking with was going to go through. And so we see this, this power, and this is the power I want you to notice here. The love, the power of our Father's love is powerful enough to pull us out of our own boat. Why is that important? <laughs> the reason that is important is just go ahead and look outside and just watch the news, which everyone is probably doing way too much of right now. We've got people in a stormy boat. We've got people out there in, the, in this boat called coronavirus scare, coronavirus concern. It's, it's wise to be concerned, but there is a fear that's taking over that isn't of God. There's a fear that's wanting to, to rob people of peace and knowing that God is here for us during this time. And, and honestly, just on a practical note, some of us probably need to turn off our, 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 our phones or turn off the streaming or turn off looking at the news because it's constant 24-7. You know, I'm not saying totally turn off. Look at it in the morning. Look at it in the midday. Look at it in the evening. But the, it, it's coming every minute. There's something brand new. And God's in control and he's got you. Yeah. Well, we can stay alert. We can stay alive. And again, be connected to us on Instagram and be connected to us on Facebook. And as, as we learn things, we'll connect with you and make sure everyone knows what's going on. So here's, but this is, this, this is an important truth, not as a side note, but honestly, this Father's love, power to get us out of the boat, it's the context for the rest of what we're about to read. And so let, let, let's go on then in looking at the story. Some of you might be familiar with it. So then, after Jesus gets out of the boat, ministering to the crowd, that evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. 
uh, but the disciples replied, but we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. We'll bring them here, he said. Then he said to the people to sit down on the grass, and Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and he blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. Now, how many of you, just curious, how many have heard this story before about the feeding of, the, of all these masses of people with, with just these loaves and these fishes? Yeah, we were familiar with this, but let's take a look at it from this context, if you will, of the Father's love and, and what it can do in pulling us out. The first thing I want us to note is in this, in this scenario, the disciples are, are confronted with this problem. We've got a bunch of people, we need to care for them, and they need to be fed. And so what they do is what I think I do a lot, and I'm sure many of you think that, is they created a plan. They had their own plan. Their own plan was, tell them to go buy things. <laughs> Sounds like America to me, but you know, tell, tell, them, to, tell them to go out and, and get some food before it gets too late. That was their plan. And, and so we see this, this limit, if you will, of our planning. Their planning was just based on what they could see, and it was based on the resources that they saw they had. Sure. They, they looked and said, you know, we don't have hardly anything, we don't have enough to feed everybody, so therefore we need to do something different. And they were limited in their perspective of what could take place, because their plan was limited in only looking at what they had, not looking at what God had. And I don't know about you, but I've been hearing a lot about that. I've been hearing a lot about that lately. This rush on toilet paper. I won't comment more than, than just saying that, but I think that shows a, a limit of our, of our scope of our understanding of the situation. Our fear can get to us, and we can go run out to the store and buy things. We can run out to the store and buy things. Anyone read this, by the way? <laughs> All right, here you go. There you go. And if you need to, honestly, if you need toilet paper at home, let us know. We're here to help. So we're going to get to more of that later. So anyway, we, we see here is that Jesus responds to them that you don't need anything else. And the way he responds to them is letting them know, look, you, you guys can handle this. What do you got? And now I want you to take a look at this, this exchange here. So what God says, and this is really key, is in verse 18, he says to them, bring them here. Bring all the loaves and all the fishes to me. Bring it all. Now stop and think about this for a second. Here's the creator of the universe who could have took four fish and or excuse me, or, you know, just one fish and one loaf and done the same miracle. But he didn't. He said, bring it all to me. I want it all. I want you to surrender you, your own thinking of what you can do. I want you to bring it all to me and I'm going to exchange it and make a miracle out of it. So here's this divine exchange that takes place. When God asks us to give him all of our life, it's so that he can do a multiplying supernatural work through it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. It's so that he can move. Yeah. When I say all of our life, yeah, our financial life, our health life, our love life, our business life, our friendship life, Everything. When we give ourselves to him, when we say we're a Christian, it's not just saying I believe in Christ. Even the devil believes in Christ. What we're saying is I'm a follower. I am his. I am his child. I am his son. I'm his daughter. I'm surrendering my life to him. 
That's what getting baptized is all about. We immerse ourselves into the water of life. We, we basically kind of hold our breath and die and rise to live a new life again, a life in him. So we belong to Jesus. We all are all in. That's what being a follower of Jesus is about. Not just being an ideological believer, but being owned by him. Fully, so that something supernatural can multiply in the world. And not just bread and fish, but his love. And so here, 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 I want you to focus on these two words with me. These are incredible words in this divine exchange. You see that word bring? That word bring, it comes from the Greek word enigma. And it means to bear, to carry, to endure. So here, here's God saying, you know, take your burden and bring it here. And then if you look at verse 19, it says, he gave. The Greek word there is edokin. It means to bestow. It, it, it doesn't. It, bestow is something where I have it. It's a part of me, and I'm giving it to you. Bestow is not, I'm going to grab it from the shelf. And I'm going to carry it over, and I'm going to give it to you. It wasn't mine. I'm just kind of transferring things. Okay? So this is Jesus saying, look, I am going to take your burden, and I'm going to bestow something from me that's abundant beyond what you can possibly ask or imagine. Do you it. see that? Amen. I mean, th this, is, this is God saying to us, if you give me everything, I'm going to multiply it. Now, we see that in Scripture. Jesus talked about in Luke chapter, uh, it's on the next screen. Forgive me for stumbling the address. Luke chapter 6. He said, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, like grain in a jar. Pressed down, shaken together so you can get more in there to make room for more. Running over and poured out into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you give back. See, if we're moved by the love of God to surrender our whole lives to Him, He's going to take everything that we got and He's going to multiply it. And it's going to expand beyond what we could possibly think or ask or imagine. And so we, we see this, this divine exchange. Now, now here's the kicker to it. Here's the kicker to it. The kicker to it is what Jesus said to them when they came to him with the problem. They came to him with the problem going, hey, there's a bunch of people that need to be fed. Yeah. Hey, Lord, yeah. there's a whole world out there that has a fear of this virus right now. Come on. And Jesus said, you feel? Yeah. You feel? <laughs> you got the stuff. You have the stuff. We are the who. We are the who that God wants us to use to be the called out people, the ecclesia, the church, to pour out his blessing. That's right. Amen. We're called in this time to feed the five pounds. Because notice it, you know, we, I, I've said it many times myself, Jesus fed the five pounds. No, he didn't. He did it with the disciples. He did it with them. There's a together thing that's going on here. There's this aspect of, of you feed them, but it, it, it's Jesus saying to us, leave what you're thinking I'm stuck with inside this box, leave the building and go out and serve the people and love on them in faith. Now, of course, we need to do that by wisdom. Right in this in this particular time, but here's how we can feed people, and, and, I, and I, I look for interaction if I can right now from our people watching at home. The way we can feed people is we can pray. Yeah. Amen. You know what? They're starving right now for peace. They're they're, they're wrapped up in, in in anxiety and fear. You can call, and this this could be a calling for us today. Call your family, somebody you're, that isn't here or you're not in your own home with. Call a family member. Share the anxiety story. Let's get it out. 
Let's listen with compassion. Let, let's talk about the things that we're seeing, right? The toilet paper. But then feed them with peace. Amen. Close the conversation by saying, I'm going to pray. Amen. Join me in prayer. Because when you pray, you're bringing in the presence of God. And you can yeah. do that through the phone or through the internet or through a text. But you pray. And don't just say, I'm praying for you and hang up. Pray. Articulate. Speak out the Spirit with them. That's a way of feeding the 5,000 right now. For us to have, let God pour out through us. There's other ways, too. There's, you know, we did it here in our worship. Pray for the caretaker. Pray for Jen Guerrero. Pray for uh, the nurses and, and who are out there caring for people who are sick. You know, they have children. You know, and, and now schools are closed. And so, you know, th there might be another need. Maybe, there, maybe there's a neighbor you can watch a kid for. You know, and, and then there are people that are sick. There's elderly out there. You know, my concern in all this uh, panic shopping that's going on is, is the elderly, are they getting what they need? I mean, well, it, it, how intimidating is that for someone in their 80s to be going to Costco right now and, and, and fight that mob? They might be home concerned that they don't have enough of something and we just need to drop it off. Now, of course, drop it off with safety. Maybe just leave it at their doorstep. Don't engage. But who knows what we need to do with that? Pay attention. Let's be wise. Let's be smart, right? But but let's not be disconnected here and just and just hovel and go, okay, I... I I did church, and I'm going to turn off the, the, the turn off the um, Facebook, and then I'm done. Let, no, let's 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 feed five thousand today. Amen. Let, let's let the Lord's Spirit touch other people today. Amen. And and it, again, if you're out there, tell us who we need to pray for. Give us their names. We're, we're writing them down as we speak. I feel like I'm kind of on a telephone. If you, will. <laughs> you know, we're ready to take your call. I mean, give us the, the names of people that we can pray for. And we're going to do that. Because we have this need for, for letting God pour through us. And here, here's the last thing I want to, want to say for us together. And that is, this feeding of, of the 5,000, using that as a metaphor, if you will, for our times right now, it, it goes beyond this time. God is sovereign. He doesn't do anything without a purpose. I, I, I'm not sure about this privilege, but it was certainly an experience to minister to this congregation during 9 -1 -1, September 11th. And I think many of us out there who remember those moments knew how just knee-buckling that was for this country to worship God. And then the statistics showed that after 45 days, attendance was at churches was right back to where it started. I'm not sure what the result is going on right now with people turning to God. Uh, I know the churches are connecting probably to more people than they have before. But we need to stay connected. We need to stay feeding each other. Because there, there's these two words that Jesus said to us. One was the great commandment itself, which was love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And what's the other part, church? Love your neighbor as yourself. And then it's us for a body. Uh, Peter wrote in his letter, in 1 Peter chapter 5, he said these words. Care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly. Not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a corona of never-ending glory and honor. Sign me up for that corona. Sign me up for that corona. And I got some fraternity brothers probably watching this in, in, back in the Midwest who are laughing about the corona reference, but that's okay. Sign me up for the crown of God. Amen. Sign me up for the crown of God. Crown of glory. Because it's that that we're seeking. His movement through us. Amen, church? Yes, sir. Amen. Before I close, let me remind you, for those of you out there looking live stream, um, stay online. 
Stay in line and, and make sure you tell us your prayer request so we can pray for you. Also, if you have a need, please tell us. And I don't care what state you live in. I mean, we, we're connected. We Six degrees of separation. We know a church somewhere where you're at that can help you and give you what you need. Whatever, whatever that is. Whatever that is. And, and let's, let's stay connected. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Um, we'll see what happens. We're taking it one week at a time, whether we can gather again like we did today or whether we'll be somewhere else. But we'll be online, believe me, at 10 o'clock um, on Sunday morning. So like Facebook, go to our Facebook page and like us. Um, get on um, Instagram and connect with us. And let's watch God move through us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and stand here. We'll pray, and we're going to give it an offering to him as well. Oh, let me let me uh, let me let me share with you out there on, on the internet. Uh, you can give an offering in just seconds if you want to help us moving God's love to this community. Just go on our website, hopechristianchurch.net, and there's a giving link there, so you can help us with reaching out to people. We we need the money. Thank you for giving it. We know you're not giving it to us. You're not giving it to me. We're going to see God use it. Press down, shaking together, running over. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we just got a few loaves and a couple fishes. And that's all you want. You want it all. So we give it all to you. Right now, in this house, there's anybody here that wants to join me in prayer or giving our whole life to you, whether that's for the first time or a rededication, please join me in these words. If you're out there listening, please share in this prayer. Say it out loud wherever the comfort is that you're at. And uh, and let us know if, if, if we can talk with you about what that prayer means of giving our whole life, if it's new to you, what this journey with following him is all about. So let's just say in this prayer of dedication, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. That you love us. That you died on a cross for us. We give you our life. Our entire life. Every loaf, every fish of our life. Thank you for saving us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and your truth. To love like you do. To change us like you. To be able to Watch your supernatural divine exchange pour out through our lives. Heal our land. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Bless you, everybody. Stay in line. Give us your prayer requests. Let's not even pray for you. God bless you, everybody. The ushers have baskets for collecting the offering here today. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Good, good, good father, who you are, who you are, who you are. You know what? Stop, stop the presses, stop the presses, because you're about to leave, and I realize this is Harold's last day. With us. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harold, Harold, it's it's good news. Harold's being called to go help plant a church in the Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna pray the faith of a centurion anointing over him. Okay, meaning you don't have to be around. Jesus didn't have to touch you, and his power is still moves. So I just want to demonstrate that safely. And uh, everyone, raise your hands. Move it up to Harold. Close your eyes out there. I want you to envision Harold and Jen and their children. And we give you thanks, Lord. Thank you for the blessing and the anointing that you pulled out through them. Lord, to this house, to this family of God. Thank you, Lord, for the calling that you've given them to go to the Father's house yeah. and the Thomas and to plant a new faith, a new congregation, a new body of faith there. Yeah. Lord, we give you praise that, you know, this the little bit of hope's anointing. Lord, no, let me scratch it. The fullness of hope's anointing yeah. and of our love and who we are uniquely is upon Harold and Jen and will be DNA inside of that new work 
instead of at new congregation. We thank you, God, for his love. We thank you, Lord, that we're a family. We don't leave the family. We just sometimes move to live in a different place. So thank you, God, that we're going to see your work rise up through Harold and Jen as they plant in Natomas. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Harold. Thank you. guys come on forward let's pray let's, let's pray for these people that are
you don't want to keep this. If you're at the distance you want to be, that's fine. We're just hugging, so. All right, all right. Come on up, Michael. Experiencing in this world with the, with the coronavirus, Lord, you know that there are going to be many more needs, many more prayers that that we don't even know about yet, Lord. But you know what they are, Lord. Place them on our hearts. Place them wherever you want them, Lord. You said where two or three are gathered in your name, that you will be in the midst of them. And Lord, as we are praying uh, over these needs, Lord, reveal to us uh, what there are other people that we need to pray for. I, I think of right now. I, I'm thinking of Sharon Smith, who says that she's experiencing um, back pain and she's not able to be here with us. And she and I called her this morning, and she said, um, "I'm sorry, I won't be able to go to church." And she started to cry and said, "I miss all of you and tell everyone at church that I love them and I would love to be there, but I'm in too much pain to be." able to go so lord i lift sharon up to you right now yes, in the name of jesus lord that you would place a healing touch on her back right now supernaturally heal that that lower back pain lord that she can't sit on these chairs she can't come and and be in the midst of us lord but she's here in spirit so lord i pray heavenly father that you would touch her back Heal that, that brokenness in her body, that, that pain is so severe that no medication can reach, Lord. But we know that you have the medication that can reach that back and heal that, that soreness, that, that weak, weak back, that lower back pain that she can't seem to get rid of. No medication can do it. So, Lord, show her your supernatural healing in the name of Jesus, Lord. I think of others that that are in our midst that are in pain. I also think of Karen Gallo, who has just recently had surgery, mm -hmm. and Lord, but she's here today, Lord, so I thank you and praise you, Father, for giving her the heart and the spirit to be here to worship with us, Lord. I thank you for her willingness to want prayer. And Lord, thank you for sending me, ordering my steps to be the one who come to her house and to pray over her. And Lord, I'll continue to lift her up uh, as she heals. Lord, send that supernatural healing, get her back to the place where she needs to be, Lord. And anyone else that is that is um, having uh, issues right now that we, we may or may not even know about, Lord. If there's anyone, Lord, that you want to place on our hearts to pray for throughout the week, Lord. We know there are many here of the prayer, prayer team that are not here because they may be sick as well. I, I don't see my brother Gary. I see some other people that are missing. Lord, I just thank you for, for uh, Sister Connie and her willingness to, to teach us about the mask and, and her willingness to, to, to tell us about the, the um, using the, the alcohol and the, the hand wipes and all the things that she's brought to help us um, feel a little better about communicating and, and 
Let us not have a spirit of fear, Lord. I, I just pray Psalm 91 on, on this house right now in the name of Jesus. I pray Psalm 91, Lord. Can we cast out the, the fear of, of illness? We cast out the, the, um, the, the enemy's lies and tricks. We cast out anything that is not of you, Lord. We just want to be soaking in you and in your spirit right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I, I see that my, my sister Becky is not here, and she's also part of our prayer meeting. Ministry. So, Lord, whoever, whatever is going on in their lives, Lord, I ask that you would heal it. You would mend it so that they would be able to come back to us, Lord. Let us not forget the assembling of ourselves together, Lord. Lord, we know that, that um, we have to be safe, but help us, Lord, not to be weary of our well-doing because of all these things that are going on right now, Lord. We just lift you up. We praise you. We thank you for the gathering of souls. Your, where your name is lifted up, thank you for the service. Thank you for the message. Thank you for your word and your truth. And we stand on Psalm 91 today, Lord. I thank you and praise you for giving me that scripture. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your tender mercy. That your grace is sufficient for all of us. As Paul said, your grace is enough for me. So let us, your grace be enough for us in this difficult time that we are in. But we love you, Lord, and we welcome you, and we, we anticipate your coming again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lord, I, I would like to lift up um, the elderly, Lord, to you. I pray that you would, Lord, I pray that you would show us those in our lives and those that are even in our lives, Lord, that you want us to reach out to and just show us how that we can minister to come alongside them because we are feeling lonely, Lord. Um, we take it for granted that we can, like Dennis said, go to Costco, Lord God, but just show us who in our midst um, that we need to reach out to, Lord God, and show your love to them. Too. Show us that today, Lord Jesus. watching us on live stream on Facebook we are looking into our comments if you have any prayer requests or anything that you'd like to let the congregation know about please feel free to go ahead and add it in the comments you can also message us and we'll get that a little bit later but we thank you for being a part of our service this morning praise God for you God bless